nothing more exciting than finding out you're going to be adding a little one to your family. And when it's baby time, you start to think all things baby, including how is baby going to get here? Well, maybe one option for you would be having a midwife join you. Well, we're going to talk about midwifery right now with Melanie Lavers, who's a partner at Cambridge Midwives and a registered midwife herself. And also with her is Corrine Whitten, who's a registered midwife. Wonderful to have both of you here. Thank you for having us. Lisa. I have to admit, I had three children. I did not have a midwife, but for my second child, I did have another person with me. And at, at that time, I thought, wow, what a difference it makes to have that third person there, somebody to kind of coach you through the wings. A little bit of what midwives do, but it, it's so much more than that, Melanie. Too. That's right. And one of the uh, misconceptions that people have is what you, sounds like you're speaking about is a doula. And doulas are wonderful. They provide labor support. Um, midwives, on the other hand, take four years of university to become primary care providers. And so we're very similar to a family doctor in that we provide all the prenatal care a woman would need, all tests and procedures. Um, the, in, like a family doctor, we would deliver the baby. And also like a family doctor, we would do the postpartum care. What differs with midwifery care um, often is how long the visits are. People find that it's very personalized because they have the room and space to, to ask questions um, when they're going to have their baby, if they choose to have a hospital birth. We're the ones admitting them, so it's the same person they met prenatally. And then postpartum, one of the things that keeps women coming back um, are the postpartum visits. We do home visits for the <coughs> first week to two weeks, and it can be very difficult with uh, a new mom or a mom with other children to try to get out of the house in that first week. It's, <laughs> it's kind of hard, so it's nice to have it somebody is. coming to you. Well, and it, it, it just sounds like, you know, really, you go through the pregnancy with the woman. You're, you're there almost from the initial steps all the way through the pregnancy and beyond. And I think that is uh, one of the things that women particularly appreciate about midwifery. Uh, one of the things we always like to highlight is that continuity of care piece. Um, so that you will have one midwife or a small group of midwives taking care of you through your entire pregnancy, there for your delivery and taking care of you afterwards. And we really do find that that results in um, uh, lower rates of intervention at a birth, that one-on-one -on -one, uh, care and continuity of care results in lower rates of intervention and C-section um, during the birth, higher rates of breastfeeding mm -hmm. afterwards and lower rates of readmission from mom or baby afterwards because they're getting that close one-to-one -one, uh, care afterwards at home as well. Mm -hmm. Another one, of, I guess, of the misconceptions that we probably have about midwifery is when you hear mid about somebody having a midwife, you think, oh, well, it was a home birth. <laughs> That's not the case. That's not always the case. It's true. And Melanie and I were just chatting when we were preparing for our interview, kind of what are some of the key things that we would like to promote. Um, midwifery has been a regulated profession for nearly 20 years now, and yet there are some of these um, sort of myths um, that people just don't, that they assume about midwifery. Um, and, and one of those things is, well, I like a midwife, but I don't want to have a baby at home. In our area, it's about 80% of uh, the women we take care of actually have a ho hospital birth. Um, and with that, so obviously 20% have a home birth, and we cater to uh, the general population. Because we are a service that's covered by the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, um, it's the reason why we can take women who don't have OHIP, and if you have OHIP, that covers um, the other services, so we're a free service provided by the Ministry. Um, if somebody has a hospital birth, obviously that's included, that's covered by OHIP. We have admitted admitting privileges at Cambridge Memorial Hospital for our practice. We love our hospital. We have such great relations with the obstetricians and the nurses. We work really collaborative um, with our hospital, so we're, we're quite happy in our little niche. And interestingly enough, in Cambridge, uh, we actually attend uh, 25 to 30 percent of the births in, in our area. Yeah, I was going to say, you have a lot of experience mm -hmm. because since opening Cambridge Midwives, y you've delivered over 5,000 babies. That's, That's right. a lot of yeah. babies. Yes, we are actually one of the uh, long-standing established practice. We've been uh, around since the 2000, and uh, it started with a couple of midwives, and now we have 12 midwives in our practice servicing our area. Mm -hmm. You're also a, a teaching practice. 
Most funny, midwives yeah. in Ontario are teaching okay. practices. We limit the number of students that we have because we want to make sure that if women don't want uh, a student, that they still have the space to decline, but we certainly encourage it. Uh, we both came from the program, so we think it's really awesome, and most women um, enjoy their experience with, with the student. And what was it for you, Corinne, that, that made you think that, okay, being a midwife, that, that was the choice for you? It's actually, I do get a lot of questions about that. I am um, newer to the profession than Melanie is, and I do get a lot of those questions, like why did you launch the second career? Why did you go back to school? My background is in marketing, and, and so it, it seems like a big turn, but for me it really was. Um, I have three children myself, and two of them were born um, actually at Cambridge Midwives, and it was such, um, such a powerful and thrilling experience. I thought, wow, I wish I had a job where I could empower women and be involved in families in this way. I wish I could do this. And oh, a few years later, I thought, in fact, I think I will do that. <laughs> um, so it's really come full circle. And here I am working at Cambridge Midwives and absolutely loving it. Wonderful. Well, if anybody wants to get in touch with you and, and find out more about Cambridge Midwives, Melanie, what's the best way to do that? Well, we do have a website, um, and it's easy to Google because our name is Cambridge Midwives. So if you Google <coughs> Cambridge Midwives, um, the website is the same. Um, and then the local number is, I'm sure, on our screen, but you can call us anytime. And uh, we certainly determine whether people are appropriate for care, and we welcome tons of inquiries. And probably an important point is actually that women can self-refer. If, if yep. you are a woman who's interested in midwifery care, you can call directly. You actually don't even need to be uh, referred by your family doctor. You, you can mm -hmm. call us directly and, and arrange that first appointment, and we'd love to talk more about midwifery. Which is great to know. And there may be an option for you, and the numbers and everything are up on the screen, so you can certainly contact them today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. All Thank right. you. We're back with more daytime in a moment. Stay with us.